This world is built on things we rarely notice. Steel beams rise high, concrete walls stand firm, and glass reflects the sky. But none of it holds without the smallest of connections, the quiet places where one part meets another. A column cannot simply stand. It needs something beneath it, something unseen yet vital. That hidden element is the base plate. It carries the weight, steadies the height, and decides whether strength lasts or fails. Today, we look closer at the shoreline where structure meets ground and find meaning in what most people never see, the silent foundations. Columns and beams often take all the credit. They are tall, visible, and easy to admire. But none of their strength matters without a way to meet the earth below. That meeting point is the base plate, a flat piece of steel pressed between the column and its foundation. It looks ordinary, almost boring, compared to the towering parts it supports. Yet it is the first place where the forces of a structure touch the ground. Think of it as a shoreline. On one side stands the superstructure, reaching up toward the sky. On the other side lies the substructure, buried in the earth, unmoving and ancient. The base plate is the strip of land in between, small but necessary. Without it, nothing balances. Walk through a city and you will see them everywhere if you start paying attention. Under signs, beneath bridges, holding up lights and poles. They rarely call for notice, yet they are always there. Quiet, steady, carrying burdens far larger than their size. The hidden beginnings of every structure rest on these simple plates of steel. The first decision size and pressure. The first question with any base plate is simple to ask, but important to answer. How big should it be? A column pushes down with force, and that force needs somewhere to go. If all of it presses into a small spot, the ground beneath can crack or crush. Spread it wider, and the pressure eases. That balance between force and area is the heart of the design. Imagine pressing a nail into your palm with your hand. The point digs in sharply because the area is tiny. Now flip the nail around and press with the head. The same effort feels softer, almost harmless, because the pressure spreads. Concrete responds the same way. It does not fail because of weight alone. It fails when the stress concentrates too much in one place. Engineers calculate the needed size by dividing the expected load of the column by the safe pressure the foundation can carry. On paper, it seems almost too easy. But real life is not paper. Forces shift, conditions change, and materials behave in ways that are never perfectly predictable. Still, that first decision, the area of the plate, sets the stage for everything else that follows. Stiffness and strength. Size alone does not guarantee safety. A plate can be wide enough, yet still fail to share the weight properly. That is because steel, though strong, can bend. When a thin plate flexes under a column, the pressure gathers close to the center, leaving the edges almost useless. Instead of spreading evenly, the load digs deep in one spot. Picture laying a heavy object on cardboard. The middle sags, the edges lift, and all the force funnels through a small patch. Steel behaves in the same way if it is too thin. The solution is stiffness. By making the plate thicker, or by shaping it with ribs called stiffeners, engineers create a surface that resists bending. A stiffer plate presses more evenly, letting the foundation below share the work. In simple structures, a few millimeters of extra thickness might be enough. For massive loads, like bridge supports, the plates become heavy blocks with added reinforcements. Each choice balances material cost against safety. Weight 
against reliability. In the end, the stiffness of the plate decides whether the foundation feels a sharp jab or a steady hand. Quiet strength often comes not from size, but from rigidity. When gravity isn't enough, gravity is usually an ally. A column is pressed down by its own weight and by the loads it carries, keeping the plate snug against the foundation. That natural pressure is why ancient stone blocks could stand without bolts or glue. But modern structures face more than gravity. Wind, vehicles, and even earthquakes push and pull from the side, testing every connection in unexpected ways. Think about a highway sign. The steel column holding it may not weigh very much compared to the wide panel above. When the wind blows across that surface, it becomes like a giant sail. The sideways force can be stronger than the downward force of the column itself. Suddenly, the base plate must resist twisting, sliding, or even lifting. That is why anchors are added. They are steel rods or bolts that tie the plate into the concrete beneath. They reach down, gripping the foundation so the column cannot shift or rise. Anchors take on shear and tension, the kinds of forces gravity cannot handle alone. Without them, even the largest plate could tip or slide away. In these moments, the connection is not just about bearing weight. It becomes about holding firm against the restless world around it. Fragility of Anchors Anchors seem strong at first glance. Thick steel rods sunk deep into concrete give the impression of permanence. Yet, like all parts of a structure, they have limits. Anchors can fail, and they can fail in more than one way. Some break clean through when the steel itself reaches its limit. Others slip from the concrete, losing their grip as if pulled from soft soil. Sometimes the concrete around them shatters, leaving a cone-shaped scar where the bolt once held. If the anchor sits too close to an edge, the force can punch out the side completely. Each possibility is a quiet reminder that even simple parts hide complexity. There are many styles of anchors, threaded rods set while the concrete is wet, bolts tightened with wedges, or rods glued into drilled holes with epoxy. Each offers strength in its own way, but none are invincible. Calculating their true capacity means considering every kind of failure not just the most obvious one. For engineers, this is where design becomes less about simple arithmetic and more about anticipating weakness. Anchors may look like guardians, but their strength is fragile if the details are ignored. Imperfect reality tolerances. Concrete is strong, but it is rarely perfect. When a foundation is poured, the sides are shaped by forms, and those can be measured with precision. The top, however, is finished by hand. Tools smooth the surface, but no matter how skilled the workers, small slopes or uneven spots remain. For most purposes, that's enough. For a column that must stand straight, even the smallest tilt can grow into a serious problem. A column just one degree off vertical may lean inches out of place at the top. That is enough to misalign beams twist connections, or throw a structure out of balance. Perfection is not easy, and time pressure during construction makes it even harder. This is where tolerance comes in. Base plates are given room for adjustment. Shims, thin pieces of metal, can be slid beneath one side to level a column. Another method uses leveling nuts threaded onto anchor rods. By turning them up or down, the entire plate can be raised or tilted until the column stands exactly where it should. These small adjustments may not seem important, but they are the quiet fixes that turn an imperfect surface into a precise foundation. Grout as the bridge. Shims and nuts can make a column stand true, but they also create a gap beneath the plate. That space changes how the forces move. Instead of spreading smoothly into the concrete, the load may press only through the bolts or a few thin edges. 
The answer many builders turn to is grout. Grout is like concrete made thinner and finer. It flows into gaps, settles flat, and hardens into a solid bed. With it in place, the base plate rests on a continuous surface again. The weight of the column spreads evenly, and the foundation receives the load as it should. But grout is not a perfect solution. Over the years, cycles of vibration or shifting loads can weaken it. Water can seep in and stay trapped, feeding corrosion where no one can see. And inspections become harder, since the critical connection is hidden from view. Still, grout has been the trusted bridge for countless structures. It solves one problem while asking new questions. It shows how every layer in engineering is a trade-off, a compromise between strength, durability, and the limits of time. The rise of standoff plates. Some base plates don't sit flush on the concrete at all. Instead, they hover just above it, supported by anchor rods and leveling nuts. These are called standoff base plates. At first glance, they look unfinished, as if something is missing. But the design is intentional. The anchors are made strong enough to carry every kind of force, pushing, pulling, and twisting, without relying on grout. The open space below also makes it easier to inspect the connection, keeping rust or cracks from hiding out of sight. To those passing by, the gap can seem like a weakness. Many assume these plates are meant to snap away in a crash, a built-in safety feature. That belief is common, but it is mostly wrong. Breakaway posts exist, but they are for smaller roadside signs designed to collapse easily. For heavier structures, like tall poles or overhead signs, breakaways would cause greater danger if they fell across a roadway. The standoff base plate has a different purpose – visibility, strength, and long-term safety. It may look delicate, but its real role is endurance. What appears like a gap is actually a quiet choice for resilience. Base plates rarely earn attention yet they hold the first line of every structure's story. They spread force, resist movement, and offer balance where steel meets earth. Once you begin to notice them, the world looks different. Every pole, every sign, every column reveals its quiet partner below. They are proof that the smallest details shape the strength of the whole. In engineering, as in life, it is not always the tallest or brightest parts that matter most. Often, it is the hidden connections that decide whether something stands or falls.